Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Dandy Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons & Dragons, where we try to take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like edgy kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Check us out on Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel. A big, big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for what you do. Again, if you are interested, the link is in the description. And a big shout out to our good friends at Dice Legion. Check them out for all your TTRPG needs, dice, dice bags, accessories they have it all and use the promo code sinister and get 10 percent off all your purchases with that out of the way we're gonna jump into this week's video we're talking about the simic hybrid the simic hybrid comes to us from Guildmaster's guide to ravnica it's a great great species mainly because it gives you a lot of great options to be very very different the lore behind it is pretty pretty awesome you're basically frankenstein's monster you were basically genetically spliced you were put together with other parts you're just this weird amalgamation of dna and as you level up you kind of change and morph in to different options so there's a lot of different choices you can make there's different abilities you can get and it gives you this great brand new like i was just created kind of mentality so if you like warforge this is a lot like warforge but you get a lot of different viable abilities that you can choose from a little bit of customization and it's availability to be a brand new entity you are the first of your kind you are a simic hybrid but your genealogy can create a whole new lineage of species it's very cool to consider yourself your own progenitor of your own race like it's it's a very cool concept and you can mix it around and use your ability scores and change it to fit into a variety of different classes and subclasses and i think it's really really a shame that you don't see it as often as you should for the base abilities you're pretty average you have 30 walking speed which is pretty average your medium size which is about as average as you can get uh your alignment can be whatever you want again you're kind of brand new to the world so you can do or be anything or you could have been punished and be a lab rat your entire existence in which case you probably lean more towards evil i think the kind of lore behind it really gravitates towards that which is something i love um your ability scores you get two to con and then one to any ability score you want this was pre tasha's so you don't have the availability to swish around your ability scores wherever you see fit but having two con and one to go wherever you want does give you a great viability to really customize yourself to fit any class you don't have anything specific that deters you from being one or encourages you to being another class You also gain dark vision out to 60 feet, which is pretty great. A lot of the times you do need dark vision. It does alleviate a lot of the problems and, and issues you'll face because carrying a torch around is a little dependent on where you are. It might give away your position. Other entities that have dark vision may or may not actually want to use torches. But that being said, it is something that you do need to kind of alleviate a lot of pressure and undue stress unless you're planning on being very um oriented around not having dark vision and trying to lure people to you this is really going to be something that's always usually beneficial it's something that people look for in a species it's one of the markers of things that people always always want to grab and if they don't have it they're kind of at a loss which is something that you really want to incorporate when building a character animal enhancements your body has been altered with animal characteristics. You choose one animal enhancement now and one at fifth level. Mantiglide. You have ray-like fins that you can use as wings to slow your fall or allow you to glide. When you fall and are not incapacitated, you can subtract up to 100 feet from your fall when calculating your fall damage. You can move horizontally two feet for every one foot you fall. Nimble Climber. You have climb speed equal to your walk speed. Underwater adaptation. You can breathe air and water and you gain a swim speed equal to your walking speed. These are some of the options you can choose for your Simic Hybrid right at Jump Street. So as soon as you pick your Simic Hybrid, now you have reasoning to have all these other abilities. The important thing about having climb speed and, and swim speed is that yeah, you do have to make a check to climb, but it does reduce your movement speed by a huge amount. Having climb speed 
does make that easier for you to climb around and do other things and, and be up in the ceilings or what have you. It's very rare that you see climbing outside of adventuring circumstances. And by adventuring, I mean like traversing the terrain or climbing a mountain or something or, or crossing a bridge. Those are like adventuring tasks. Very rarely will you use climbing outside of that. And a lot of the times if you do, it's either a damn fear climbing walls or somebody using spider climb or someone having that ability because of a magic item or because they morphed into a, uh, a beast that can do that. Whatever it is, in the rare opportunity that you're using climb speed in a more creative out of the box kind of a way, having this does actually benefit you. Now with underwater adaptation, this is really campaign dependent. If you're going to be in a desert, this really isn't going to help you too much. But if you're in Ghost of Salt Marsh, or, or if you're going to be some places where you know there's going to be an ocean, or, or you're along the Sword Coast, that's a great reason to have this. Being able to breathe underwater can help you, especially if you're in caves with ponds and things like that. You might be able to set up an ambush. You might be able to do creative things. Maybe there's an item or something that you need that's in the depths of a pool and you're the only one that can hold, like, sustain being underneath that kind of a water. It's very beneficial to have that, but it's only necessary through a campaign setting so really talk to your dms when you're playing new campaigns and thinking about this because you want to make that work now manta glide this is just fun a lot of the times you'll be in higher areas where gliding can make you move a significant amount of distance say you're trying to cross a bridge but you're high enough you could just glide and make it faster than you would if you had to climb down and then make the checks necessary to cross this rickety bridge uh you can use it to kind of cheat your way through things Plus, you just you have a safety option for if we are ever knocked off a building or, or somebody used third thunder wave while you're next to a, a cliff or something or a balcony, you can now sustain that and survive that. And it does give you a cool little option to be more three dimensional in your in your landscapes and your character planning. Grappling appendages. You have two special appendages growing alongside with your arms. Choose whether they're both claws or tentacles. As an action, you can use one of them to grapple a creature. Each one is also a natural weapon, which you can use to make an unarmed strike with. If you hit, they do 1d6 plus your strength modifier bludgeoning damage. Immediately after hitting, you can try and grapple the target as a bonus action. These appendages are are not dexterous enough to use weapons, magic items, or other specialized equipment. Now, this is, again, a fifth level option. So you just hit level five and you just have this. They just, like, protrude or, or, or grow, kind of like in a very grotesque manner if uh, you really want to get into it. I do think if you're going to pick one of these you should try and do them cohesively if you had underwater breathing yeah i think it makes a lot of sense for you to have extra tentacle arms uh or or, or lobster claw like arms how you build with this is important to who you are it is a strength modifier at this point you can do a lot with it but if you were say a monk or um maybe a beast barbarian this now augments to a natural weapon that you can use. For the monk, it's the best option because that will now scale all the way up to a 1d10. So if you do want to hit and then grapple something, which is beneficial for you, now you have a way to do it where you can do a little bit of damage as opposed to completely just dropping the attack just to do a grapple. Uh, depending on what other weapons you're using, what other reasons you have to be in melee combat, your bonus action may or may not be as influential. If you're something that wants to hold someone in place, this is a great option for you because it gives you that great free grapple. If you're not, and you can sacrifice a 1d4 if you're using great uh, polar master or, or great weapon master and give yourself that opportunity to just drop that 1d4 extra damage and grapple someone so they can't chase anyone else. It's your extra appendage so your other arms are still out there and free and viable so you can be wielding a shield and a sword in your normal arms and just be holding an enemy with this one. When you start to use that, 
as your vision point for it and how it works, it changes the viability of what this ability is. And it tends to go really underneath the radar because everyone thinks, oh, 1d6 and strength modifier, but you do get to hold everything else in your hands. If you're wielding a two weapon, um, a two handed weapon, and you grapple someone, technically you're not supposed to be able to still wield that two handed weapon because you're doing it with one hand. And are you really going to give yourself this advantage to hit? It depends really on who you're trying to be. This makes grappling more accessible to you. This makes grappling more of a, of a very unique ability that almost fits really, really well uh, in a variety of different roles because you can hold something and still not lose any of the viability of having your free hands active. Carapace. Your skin in places is covered by a thick shell. You gain plus one to your AC when not wearing heavy armor. This is a little bit more specific of a scenario. Yes, plus one armor is kind of a lot when you really don't get your armor up all that high. This is something that you gotta really consider with who you're building and what you're building. This is when class becomes very, very important. Say you wanted the dual wielder feat. Uh, say you were a ranger and you wanted a rapier and a short sword. Very, very thematic visually. Um, if you had a dual wielder feat, that gives you plus one bonus to your AC. This will make it so it seems like you're just carrying a shield. So now you're really, really significantly ahead on the defensive scale because of that. If you have fighting styles and you're looking to pick up defense anyway, that gives you a plus one to AC. This will give you another one. And if you don't specifically need a fighting style or you have another way to get it because say you're multi-classing, now you can have heavy armor, a shield, and dueling. And you're really still holding a shield and a dueling weapon or, or because you picked a defensive feat and you took this carapace and then you picked dueling as your feat because you multi-class into something else that gave you a fighting style. Dependent on your build, this can be very, very beneficial. Or if you just don't like the other options, this is a great safe option for you. You're a rogue. Studded leather gives you 12 plus your your uh, your dex modifier. So here you go. Now you're rocking at 13 plus your dex modifier. You're a draconic sorcerer. You're now rocking 14 plus your dex for your armor. It's a buff that's pretty standard and usable across the board. Everyone likes extra AC. It makes a huge difference, especially if you're tanking. Uh, anyone with unarmored, um, like as a base thing from either their class or their species, this is going to add on to it. Lizard Folk, 14 plus dex. Like it's, it's a big, useful ability that is universally great. But I think picking your build specifically around what you're going to be doing and taking the plan to think it out um, long term is really what's going to get you the most benefit because again you don't have to hit fifth level in a specific class you just have to be a fifth level character so if you're two levels in paladin and three levels in warlock you're a fifth level character so you can grad add this onto yourself acid spit as an action you can spray acid from glands in your mouth targeting one creature or object you can see within 30 feet of you the target must make a dexterity saving throw against a DC of 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. The target takes 2d10 acid damage if they fail. The damage increases to 3d10 at 11th level and 4d10 at 17th level. You can use this up to your constitution modifier's worth of times per day. That language at the end is very strange. Um, but I guess they were just trying to figure that out. So your constitution matters, and you do get a plus two to it. So it's very, very important to note that. If you're using classes, they have some classes that have um, abilities that are based on your constitution modifier, uh, like the Rune Knight Fighter. Um, so maybe this is something that you want to put in conjunction with that. It is a 30-foot range, so it is a range option that you can do a couple of times a day. Acid is a great damage type. Uh, it's very helpful, especially if you're fighting something that regenerates HP. Acid will help to deteriorate that from happening and give you a better opportunity to survive the encounter. Again, you have to pick who you're 
build is and think long distance when picking the species because it's a lot of complex ideas that you're kind of putting together and all the abilities that you pick from you cannot exchange you get one shot that is what it is uh so at first level pick one that really kind of coincides and at fifth level it, it's more of a of a buff at fifth level just for turning fifth level uh, so it's a great opportunity for you to really harness what you're trying to do as a Simic hybrid and who you're trying to be as a Simic hybrid. The Acid Spit is a great option to just throw something out there and do a random save or maybe just make somebody do something. Um, it's not a spell and that's important to note. So anybody that's going Draconic Bloodline and expecting to do this on top of that and add that extra damage... I mean, I could see maybe a DM letting it go, but it's definitely something you need to at least clear up beforehand because there is some wiggle room with it. Our final thoughts. The Simic Hybrid is so versatile. It gives you a lot of what you need. The base stats are great. You get dark vision. You get everything you need for a standard subspecies to be at least applicable in 90% of what you're trying to do. The extra abilities, the animal enhancements, really give you this customization that you don't get in any other species that exists and it gives you this great extra layer to who your character is uh you know maybe maybe you don't know what campaign you're going into and you're just jumping in uh and you're gonna start and you're gonna make your character halfway through like you got the backstory kind of put up and you know you're gonna be a simic hybrid you just don't know what's going on in the campaign and you just get dropped in poof your animal enhancements can now be part of what you know initially, and you can grow that. And your your character has this extra advancement. Uh, fifth level is a big level where we're the, you're now jumping into that next tier of play. Your damage dynamically changes because of the invention of extra attack and everything for all the party um, melee combatants that do gain that. This is now an extra bonus for hitting fifth level. Uh, and it works in so many ways. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to be, it's a great universally useful species. It doesn't get a lot of play, I think, simply because it's just not flashy. Uh, it's No one wants to run around spitting acid everywhere, but Ravnica as itself is a very complex entity. Uh, it is the uh, kind of like the world of Magic the Gathering is really based around kind of like where Ravnica is in Watts, in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So a lot of people tend to not mix and match, but it's a great setting. I love the book. It's one of my favorite books. I love the ideas and the backgrounds that are placed in it. So if you haven't read it or checked it out, really, really do. It's a great, great book and it has a lot of great, cool things in it about like the different uh, guilds and how how they work together. It's a perfect uh, layout for building your own kind of uh, heavy um, political intrigue campaign because so much of it can just be pulled right from there, reflavored and put into whatever you want. Entities and guilds and how they react with each other and what it means to be part of this guild and what enemies you have. It's a great framework for that. Uh, it's it's an awesome book. I really, really, really believe anyone that's looking to DM something like that, definitely just look at that book and check it out. Uh, that being said, it got me kind of a little bit off topic, but this is really an underused species. There's a lot of value here. And yeah, if you wanted to go custom lineage with this, it'd be unfortunate because you lose so much. Um, but if you're not looking to do some straight min max build and you want to be opt like as optimal as you can without going into multiple multi-classes and, and a variety of different things, this is a great way that gives you lots of options to up some of the things that you might be sliding on because of different choices you've made it gives you a nice cushion with armor um with adventuring because you can glide you can swim you can climb you can also like just gain extra armor acid spit or grapple if you're going to be up close and have a kind of like barbaric kind of a character it gives you that uh and it gives you a nice way to do it in a unique way that's special to one species and you don't really get a lot of that that's like only thing that the one person can do is this uh and and it's great to have that it's a shame you don't see it as often as you do but i really believe you should i really think it's an underused class 
That being said, we're going to bring this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it all the way through, thank you so much. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Check us out on Patreon. The link is in the description. A big thank you to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for what you do. Check out our good friends Dice Legion and use the promo code SINISTER and get 10% off all of your purchases. You can keep using that more than once. So every time you shop there, absolutely keep putting that code in. And above all, Thank you for giving a spooky kid a chance.